Modern video game controllers are absolute marvels of technology and show how far video games have advanced over the years. However, despite this progress, many controllers suffer from the dreaded joystick drift. Now, while this issue has existed for some time now, there really hasn't been any true fixes. Most of the solutions you'll find on the internet are largely only temporary, and before long, your controller is drifting yet again. Well, now it seems we have a permanent solution to joystick drift. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to the channel. Here at Macho Nacho Productions, I typically cover mods for retro video game consoles, but today we're going to be tackling the current and last generation consoles. More specifically, the controllers for the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Now, what do all of these controllers have in common? Well, they all have two analog sticks, all of which are very much similar to each other, and all very much prone to the joystick drift issues. If you have a controller that has joystick drift and want a permanent fix for it, hit that like button and let me know which controller you have that has drift issues in the comments below. Now, if you search online, you'll find a lot of fixes for these issues, but really they're just buying you time, and in the end, your joystick drift will most likely eventually show up again. At the heart of this issue is wear and tear on two potentiometers on each analog stick that registers the vertical and horizontal inputs. Any slight variation of resistance on these two potentiometers will result in false registered analog input causing drift issues. This leads me to today's topic of discussion. This is Helder's Analog Stick Drift Fix. These simple flex PCBs install into your controller. These small holes match exactly to the pins on the analog stick for the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X controllers. But that'll become more clear during the installation portion of this video. Now the way Helder's mod permanently fixes joystick drift is that the two potentiometers on the flex PCB will compensate for loss resistance on the existing potentiometers on the actual analog stick itself. As the analog stick wears out from normal use, they lose their factory resistant values. This kit will compensate for the loss resistance and get it back to factory spec. Now as you continue to use your analog stick even after installing this mod, it will eventually get out of spec again. But all you need to do is just recalibrate it again with Helder's kit and you're good to go making this mod a truly permanent fix. Alright, so in this video I'm going to quickly go over the contents of the kit then I'll show you how to install it into each controller, discuss how to calibrate your analog sticks once installed, go over the pros and cons of the mod, and of course end things by providing you with my overall thoughts. So Helder's kit is surprisingly simple. You get two analog stick drift fix flex PCBs, one for each analog stick, and that's it. You'll notice that there are many solder points on the flex PCB, but really only these six are being used for making the adjustments and the others are simply anchor points. So that's everything included in the kit. These will be priced at $15 for a pair, and they'll be listed on Helder's website for you to purchase, which I'll have linked in the video description down below. I'll also be giving two of these kits away. To enter the giveaway, simply like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Now, next I'll be going over how to install this kit into a PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X controllers. If you want to only see a specific controller installation process, I have timestamps in the video description below so you can fast forward to the installation of the controller that you want to see. After the installation segment of this video, I'll then demonstrate how to calibrate the controller so you can remove the drift issue. So definitely be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first controller we're going to mod is the PS5 DualSense. Now to disassemble the controller, we first need to pry off the black plastic cover. I like to start near the headphone jack. Work your way around till you get to the ends. Once the black trim is removed, it'll reveal two hidden Phillips screws. But first, pry off the L1 and R1 triggers to reveal two more screws. Then proceed to remove all four Phillips screws. Unhook these two clips next, and you should now be able to remove the bottom controller shell. Lift the battery out of the tray and unplug it. 
unfasten the single Phillips screw holding down the battery tray. Unplug the tiny ribbon cable for the controller microphone and lift out the battery tray. You can now position the Helder Drift Fix PCB onto the joystick pins as shown. Then begin to solder it in place. You'll notice I left a few points unsoldered. That's okay as they are simply anchor points and were too close to the red and black wire. Next, position the other Drift Fix PCB and again solder it in place. And this is what it should look like. Now at this point, with both PCBs installed, we would conduct the calibration process. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to reassemble the controller first. Be sure to stay tuned to the calibration section of this video to see how we will correct the controller's drift problem. The great thing about this mod is that it doesn't require any physical modification to the controller shell, and it's completely stealth. You don't even know it's there. Great, now that everything is back together, let's move on to the PS4 controller. To start off, remove the four Phillips screws on the bottom. Then begin to pry the controller apart. Again, I like to start near the headphone jack and work my way around. Next, carefully unplug this flex ribbon cable. If you accidentally damage this ribbon cable, Helder actually has replacements available on his website. Now go ahead and unplug the battery, revealing a single Phillips screw securing the battery tray very much like the PS5 controller. Then position the Helder Drift Fix PCB onto the joystick pins as shown and begin to solder it in place. And then do the same for the other. Again, once both PCBs are installed, this is when we would begin the calibration process. For the purposes of this instructional portion of the video, I am demonstrating how to also reassemble the controller. Be sure to stay tuned to the calibration section of this video to see how we will correct the controller's drift. Fantastic! With the PS4 controller completed, let's move on to the Xbox Series X controller. To take this one apart, we need to pry off the grip covers on both sides. Be careful though, they fly off. Once removed, unfasten the four T9 security Torx bits. Next, remove the battery cover and cut into the label to reveal one more T9 Torx bit. With all screws removed, both the front and rear shells come off easily. Now, go ahead and position the Helder Drift Fix PCB onto the joystick pins and then solder it in place. To install the other one, just move these wires out of the way, position the PCB in place, and then go ahead and solder it. Now, as I mentioned prior, once both PCBs are installed, this is when we would begin the calibration process. For the purposes of this instructional portion of the video, I am demonstrating how to also reassemble the controller as well. Be sure to stay tuned to the calibration section of the video to actually see how we correct the controller's drift. Awesome, now that we're done with the Series X controller, let's begin the controller for the Xbox One, which is actually extremely similar to the Series X. To start, again, pop off the grips with the spudger. Then remove the four T9 security Torx bits. Remove the battery cover and unfasten the last T9 bit hidden underneath the label. The rear shell should easily come out. Go ahead and position the Helder Drift Fix PCB and then solder it in place. Then do the same for the other joystick.
And again, as I mentioned before, once both PCBs are installed, this is when we would begin the calibration process. For the purposes of this instructional portion of the video, I'm just demonstrating how to both disassemble and reassemble the controllers. So stay tuned to the calibration section of this video to see the process of how to correct the controller's drift problem. Fantastic, so that's how you install the Helder DriftFix PCB into the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X controllers. I have to say, I really like how this mod was designed. It's a fairly simple installation and really just requires some basic soldering skills since the board is so well laid out. All the connections are perfectly aligned with the appropriate solder points. It's very well executed. Now while I did show you how to fully install and reassemble the controllers, in actuality, as soon as you complete soldering in the flex PCBs, that's when you'll do the calibration process. Only after completing that calibration will you then reassemble the controller. So to demonstrate the calibration process, I'll be using the PS4 controller that I modded. Now this process is exactly the same for all controllers, so what I'm about to show you works for all of them. To start the calibration, you'll want to first go to the Gamepad Tester website. This site shows you the exact axis position of both analog sticks. Once you're on the website, go ahead and connect your controller to your PC or Mac using the appropriate USB cable. In order for the website to detect the controller, you may need to press a few buttons. Great, once registered, you'll be able to see the position of the controller's analog sticks, and right now it looks like my left analog stick is not registered as dead center. See how the dot is a little to the right of the center? This is what analog drift looks like. You'll notice that no matter how I use the analog stick, it doesn't return to dead center. It just lands to the right of it. So if I go ahead and adjust the horizontal potentiometer a bit, you can see that it'll bring it back to center. Incredible, right? You see, the pot I just adjusted counteracted the analog stick to bring it back to center. Actually, you'll notice I can adjust the vertical and horizontal potentiometers and move the analog stick's resting position anywhere I want. Now, there really is no reason to have it other than dead center, but moving it around demonstrates how this mod works. Now, when making adjustments, make sure you're not touching the analog sticks. This would give you a false reading. You want to make sure that they are resting in their default upright position while calibrating. Awesome. So once you've completely calibrated the analog stick so that it's perfectly centered, you can now unplug it from the computer and reassemble it. Now, at some point down the road, if you notice your controller starts to drift again due to normal use, all you need to do is simply open your controller back up and perform the calibration process again. You see, this mod gives you the flexibility to correct drift for essentially the life of the controller, which is awesome. So now let's get into the pros and cons. And starting with the pros, I have to say that this is an awesome solution to an extremely annoying problem. It's amazing that there is now a permanent fix for this issue and that it works for a wide range of controllers. Now, that isn't to say that this will fix any controller with analog stick issues. There will be a few analog sticks that are severely damaged and this mod is not for them. This mod fixes the overwhelming majority of analog sticks that exhibit drift. For those sticks that are irreparably damaged, not even this mod will be able to fix it. That being said, the next pro is the ease of installation. For me, I found the disassembly to be the biggest hurdle. Once the controller was open, however, soldering in the well thought out and designed flex PCB was a straightforward process. Another great thing about this mod is that it doesn't require any physical modification to the controller shell to fit. It just solders in place, and that's it. Now other than that, there really isn't much to say here. At $15 for a set, I think this is a great price to get more life out of these very expensive controllers. I mean, I can't believe these things cost $70 now. It's insane. Okay, now let's get into the cons. And honestly, there's only a really small one. I understand that not everyone can solder, so the fact that this requires it is a bit of a bummer. But in reality, this is the only way to solve the issue and thankfully it isn't the hardest soldering job by any measure. And the fact that this kit is designed to be as easy to solder in as possible, I think it really makes the mod quite approachable. And really, the results speak for itself. A controller that may have become unusable due to a drifting analog stick can now be permanently and reliably repaired. So there you have it, a permanent fix for joystick drift for most of the current and previous generation consoles. As always, I'm curious about what you all think of this mod. 
Which controller do you have that would most benefit from a kit like this? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so definitely leave me a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.